Whether during regular, ordinary, everyday, day-to-day -day life, or during an emergency situation, and especially in an emergency situation, the ability to make a good quality decision is absolutely critical. And in order to make a good decision, it's usually required that you have good information. But what happens if you don't have good information? What if you can't trust the information that you have or information just simply isn't available? We saw this play out really clearly during COVID when at the beginning, people weren't really sure what the nature of the disease was. People weren't sure what decisions to make. And in the end, most people just trusted to authority and did what they were told. But was that a good decision or a bad decision? Well, in the end, most of the recommendations that were issued by the governing authorities at the time have either been altered, changed, tweaked, or completely rescinded, including very specifically vaccines that were administered to the American public have since been pulled from the market by governing authorities citing safety concerns, which highlights the fact that there were thousands and thousands of Americans who did something because they were told to do it, which today, if you ask those same governing authorities, would actually advise against the course that they advised earlier. So what does this mean? Well, what it means is that during an emergency situation, you can't always depend on the government or other people to give you accurate guidance as to what you should do. You really need to be able to make those decisions on your own and you have to be able to do it even when you might not have all the information that you prefer to have. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video is how can you make a good quality decision even when you don't have all the information that you'd like. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. There are several techniques that you can use to make decisions when you have kind of an information vacuum. And the number one, the first one I wanna talk about is the idea to just simply acknowledge that you don't have all the information. That is really critical for keeping a plasticity of your thinking uh, as you go through the process and new information becomes available. Uh, again, jumping back to the example of COVID, uh, there were people that kind of fractured up into camps, right? At the beginning of COVID, there were people that just thought that COVID was the absolute worst disease that had ever been witnessed by humankind. And then there were people that that thought it you know was an incredibly big nothing burger and you know there were people that you know thought viruses weren't even real you had these people separate into these two different camps and as new information came in because they refused to acknowledge that maybe they didn't have all the information at the beginning and maybe they had jumped to a conclusion that was incorrect, both camps rigidly uh, just kept trying to self-justify you know, why they were right and everybody else was wrong. The people that thought that COVID was just the worst disease ever were taking uh, you know, rare cases and elevating them as though that they were normal. They would uh, ignore all sorts of evidence that was floating around, it, all in kind of a, an effort to maintain that illusion that the way that they saw things at the beginning was 100% right, there was no deficit of information, and you know, there was no reason for them to change their perspective. In the same way that the people that thought that COVID was a big nothing burger and that viruses didn't even exist, they had to pretend that like certain people were crisis actors and the casualty reports weren't even real. And you know, there was inflation going on on both sides. And to some degree, each side kind of fueled the other's skepticism because you had one side that was inflating their numbers in order to try to make their worldview uh, make more sense. And then the other side was seeing some of that inflation, which was real and thinking that it was all inflation. So that's the most important thing you need to do right from the beginning is acknowledge and accept the fact that you don't have all the information and that your conclusions that you're coming up with at the beginning aren't your permanent conclusions. They're the best you can do at the time, but they need to stay plastic, they need to stay flexible, and they need to be able to be mobile going on into the future to account for new information when you get it so you can benefit from it. The second technique that's really critical for making good decisions without very much information relates to the first in that through your acknowledgement that you don't have all the answers, being open to the answers and ideas and perspectives of other people. That is something in our culture that we are getting worse and worse at. The idea of being able to honestly listen to people uh, with different points of view, whether it is uh, you know, relating to COVID like we've been talking about, or uh, gun laws and gun regulation and second amendment types of things, or abortion and everything related to that, or any of the hot topic issues uh, in our society today. People have a lack of ability to listen to other people with other perspectives. And it's really doing a disservice generally to our society that people aren't doing that, but they're even doing a disservice to themselves, especially in an emergency situation. If you are closing yourself off to potential good ideas just because you don't like who they're coming from, you are shooting yourself in the foot because you are cutting yourself off from potentially, possibly, maybe, really good ideas. 
A third technique that you can use for making decisions where you don't have great information here in the present is to look in the past. Similar situations that you've experienced either in your own life or historically in our society and to try to come to some conclusions based on those kind of past experiences. That can work on a personal level or on a societal level. I think here in the United States we would do well uh, whenever we're thinking about getting involved in a new uh, military operation towards the end uh, of achieving regime change somewhere in the in the world. If we look to some of our past attempts to do that, uh, we could ask ourselves, well, how well did all of those end up going in the end? You know, with we might have gone into them with the best intentions, but how did those things end up actually unfolding? And I think if we ask questions like that, here in the present, we'd probably end up making some different decisions than we oftentimes do. A fourth technique that's really critical for trying to gather new information is to assess the validity of the source from which that information is coming. If the information is coming from a politician who gets campaign funding from a large industry and their recommendation to you is to engage in some kind of a service that enriches that industry, that's a reason for having some concern as to whether or not that claim by that politician is accurate. Now a conflict of interest doesn't necessarily mean that the politician is being disingenuous and it doesn't necessarily mean that what they're advocating for isn't a good idea, but it is cause for concern. And you should have concern whether the uh, interests are monetary or something else. Uh, oftentimes here online, people are all shouting different uh, points of view and they're always trying to get other people to believe their point of view. And a lot of that comes down to people just wanting to feel validated. If somebody has an idea about something, getting more people to believe that idea oftentimes can make that person feel more comfortable in their own belief. I oftentimes will notice people who are members of a religion. The people that really solidly believe that religion, they've lived it their whole life and they're very comfortable in it, they don't need to really heckle other different people that uh, you know are maybe of a different perspective because they already have a strong sense of confidence in their own beliefs. Oftentimes in religions, it's the new people, the converts, the people that want to believe that but haven't really wrapped their minds around it. They're still kind of convincing themselves. Those are the people that are rapidly barking and yelling and trying to convince other people that the other people are wrong and they're right because they're still having an internal struggle within themselves as to whether or not these beliefs are valid or not and they desperately want to believe them. So money or power aren't always the only reason that someone might be saying something. It could just be because they desperately want to convince themselves of it and if they can convince you of it, it'll be one more brick in that wall for themselves. But all that's just about what information you probably shouldn't believe. What about what information you should believe? Well, credibility really just comes down to history and figuring out whether this information source has a history of relaying accurate information in the past. That takes a little bit more legwork on your part and it is something that requires that investment of time. But if you want to come to a good conclusion and come to a good decision, you need quality information and distilling what is quality information based on the history of that information source Source is really critical. The fifth technique I want to talk about for making good decisions without very much information is the ability to think in a probabilistic sort of way. And it gets back to the first thing that we talked about, which is acknowledging that you don't have all the information. So becoming comfortable with the idea that the decision that you are going to make isn't absolutely necessarily going to be correct, but you want to position yourself so that the decision that you do make has the highest degree of chance of being correct, or at least the lowest chance of being dangerously wrong. And this is something that I talk about constantly here on my channel, where I like to engage in preparedness and I like to take uh, actions that might have a benefit to me in the future. And I usually uh, determine which of those actions I want to take based on the ones that have the highest degree of likelihood that they'll actually yield a benefit to me in the future and the least degree of likelihood that they will be harmful to me. And what does that mean in real life? Well, what I like to do is engage in uh, prepping activities that have a broad range of benefits. Let's say uh, the example of having a large pantry. A large pantry is a useful thing to have if you have a pandemic and grocery stores shut down, if you have uh, fuel shortages and grocery stores shut down, uh, if you have terrible weather and you can't get out to the grocery store, or any number of uh, situations that might make it difficult for you to get food in the normal way that you do, having a well-stocked pantry can be a benefit uh, that can help make that situation easier for yourself. So right there off the bat, you have made it so that you're not prepping just for one thing that has like like say a 10% chance of happening or a 1% chance of happening, but you're 
you're prepping for one thing that has a 10% chance of happening, another thing that has a 10% chance of happening, and another thing that has a 10% chance of happening, and that cumulatively, um, in a probabilistic sort of way, doesn't add up to 30% chance of, of one of those things happening. But you are prepping for some uh, a number of things which are more likely to happen than any one of those in, uh, specific things. But then getting beyond that, if none of those things ever happen, and it's just as simple as you shopping the sales and you're buying stuff when it's on sale and buying it in larger quantities, you are automatically getting a benefit out of that. And in this way, you are maximizing the chance that the actions that you're taking are actually going to be of some benefit to you and minimizing the chance that they will be deleterious. The last technique I want to talk about for making decisions without great information is the creation of decision-making frameworks, which is just sort of a fancy way of talking about weighing different options, uh, the pros and cons of everything. Uh, as preppers, oftentimes we get fixated on the idea that you know X, Y, or Z are events that we don't want to have happen to us, so we, we you know prep and uh, take precautions against them. But when you create a decision-making framework, you may realize that uh, avoiding X, Y, or Z uh, isn't as bad as what you need to do in order to. Avoid Avoid it. It's sort of that uh, old cliche, like the cure is worse than the, than the disease. Uh, an example might be like uh, EMP strikes. You know, a lot of preppers are concerned that there might be an EMP strike. Maybe they'll be driving somewhere. They'll be at the store. There'll be an EMP strike. All the lights will go out. Everybody's phones go off, uh, and you know their car's dead because you know. They, they didn't have an EMP protection device on the car, or they did and it didn't work, or whatever. So they're stranded, and that's something that, as a prepper, you know, you want to avoid. Uh, to avoid that, one thing that you might do is just never go anywhere. You can just stay at home all the time, hide in your house, you know, day after day, uh, 24/7, 365, and that would ensure that that doesn't happen to you. But is that one of those things where the cure is worse than the disease? If you weigh the pros and the cons of lots of different uh, techniques that you could use, or choices that you could make, decisions that you could make, weighing those pros and cons can get you out of the mindset where I absolutely have to avoid you know, this thing from happening to me and accidentally <laughs> choosing to do something that's much, much worse than that is. So creating those decision-making frameworks allows you to look at things in perspective and come to a cleaner and more logical decision. I hope you found this topic interesting and I hope you found this video helpful. One thing I'm inferring going on into the future based on my memory of the past, remember that was one of the techniques, is that just like the past, the future is going to have ups and downs, there's going to be emergency situations, there's going to be crises, and just like, again, the past, there are going to be powerful, wealthy, uh, politically influential people who are going to try to capitalize on that and either use it for their own aggrandizement, for the uh, furthering of their, you know, their goals and whatever they might want to be accomplishing, whether that's, you know, creating more wealth for themselves or the people that support them or you know, whatever. We're going to see a lot of that from the past continuing on into the future. And it's critical to be able to make decisions for yourself and not rely on other people to tell you what to think. And it's also critical, and this is the last thing I want to leave you guys with, is it's very important to separate the message from the messenger. In the future, there are going to be politicians that you dislike that are going to be giving you advice. And you know what? Sometimes the advice is actually going to be good. It's really critical in order to make good decisions to not allow yourself to be blocked off from making good decisions just because those decisions would happen to agree with somebody that you dislike. I've been reading a book, it's called East of Eden. It's by John Steinbeck. And in this story, there's a farmer and he's talking to another gentleman about what type of doves to raise. Is either white doves or gray doves. And he's gonna raise them as a meat animal for his family. And this other gentleman that he's talking to says, you should definitely not raise white doves. You should raise gray doves. And the reason you should not raise white doves is because white doves are, I forget, it was like bad luck. It was some superstitious thing. And the farmer thought it was stupid. So the farmer uh, committed himself. He said, that I'm going to raise white doves just to show this guy that that's, a, that's crazy and I'm going to be totally fine raising white doves. Well, he tells the story to his wife later on and she's very practical and uh, she matter-of-factly reminds him that he was being controlled every bit as much as if he had done exactly what that other man said by knee-jerk reaction doing the opposite. Because, uh, in uh, the way she describes in the story, the gray doves, that breed happens to tend to be a bigger bird and it tastes every bit as good as the white doves. And if he had raised the gray doves, he'd have a bird that tasted just as good as the white doves that he was raising. Plus they'd be bigger and there'd be more meat for his family. So by doing the, uh, the knee jerk reaction opposite of what this person that he disliked 
told him to do, he ended up reducing the amount of food that there was for his family. And that is such a tempting thing for so many people in our society right now, where we are so polarized and there are people that we are just trained to dislike and distrust, and oftentimes for very good reason. But if you knee-jerk reaction, automatically just do the opposite or just commit yourself to the opposite of whatever, you know, X, Y, or Z politician that you dislike says, you are being controlled by the system, controlled by them in the very same way as the people who just do whatever that person uh, says to do. Because you are not thinking for yourself and you're allowing what they say to make the decision for you, despite the fact that you're doing the opposite, the decision power is still being taken out of your hands and you're not making that decision for good reasons. You're making it you know, for the same kind of lousy reasons of the people that just do whatever that politician says. So be careful of that going forward as well, because that is a really dangerous thing that I think all of us face when you start associating uh, one party or one group with a bunch of bad ideas to automatically reject everything that they say, even if sometimes, occasionally, maybe just through happenstance, it actually was good advice. That's it. Again, I hope you found this video helpful, and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video on decision making and you feel that I might be one of those credible sources that you talked about earlier, take my advice and check out this Alien Invasion series. It is a series that's all about prepping and preparedness, but it's got a storyline that's all about an alien invasion happening where the prepper in the story has to sink or swim based on his preps.